Hello and welcome back, it's Shala. Today we are making a card for Scrap and Stamp and we'll be making this beautiful foil Make-A-Wish card. Uh, some lovely Distress Ink blending that we're going to be doing. And I'm using this foil quill set from We Are Memory Keepers. I'll be using the smallest fine tip in this series. And I have a special giveaway today. Uh, Scrap and Stamp is going to be giving away one of these all-in-one foil quill sets for your electronic die cutting machine. Let's get started. I'm going to go ahead and do some ink blending with Tattered Rose, Abandoned Coral, and Seedless Preserves in the regular Distress inks. You can also use Oxides if you want. I chose just to use the regular inks. And I'm going to be getting my ink blending here with my regular foam brush, starting at the top of my card base in the Tattered Rose, which is the lightest color, working my way down to Abandoned Coral, and then I go back and forth between those colors, making sure they're blended together, and then down into the Seedless Preserves. Now this does take a bit to get uh, enough ink down to the intensity that I want it to be, um, so You'll have to bear with me, I do speed it along. I won't show you the entire process because we have all seen ink blending before, but I am doing this on my Wendy Vecchi Make Art Station, which is really fantastic when you're doing this sort of thing as it kind of helps hold down your project in place. And now I'm just laying down that Seedless Preserves. This is one of my favorite Distress Ink colors. It's just such a beautiful, beautiful uh, purpley color and I love the intensity it gives. All right, now that my ink blending is done, you can see um, how gorgeous those three colors are. I love this combination. I think it is one of my favorites. And then now I'm going to be using this foil quill magnetic, magnetic mat. Here you see the A um, connector. I've got a power pack and that fine tip. I can go ahead and plug this into my power pack. You are going to want a power pack source. I'm going to link to another video that I did for beginner foil quilling um, just for some uh, further information, I'm not going to go into too much detail this time on um, how to set everything up. I do that in another video. I have a foil quill uh, magnetic mat here from We Are Memory Keepers, and this is actually my mom's. She let me borrow it and try it out, so thanks so much, Mom. I appreciate you. And it comes with these long magnet magnets and some shorter magnets, and it's great because those will hold down your project. I also am going to be putting this magnet mac on the adhesive silhouette mat. I'll be using my silhouette today and some gold foiling. So let's get started. There are some special instructions with this magnetic mat. So let's take a look. Um, it does show us that when you are loading it into your mat, you do want to make sure that it is uh, level. You want to make sure you're not using your cutting blade. And then it shows you how you can use those man magnets. You want to put them about one to two inches down from the top of your um, carrier sheet. All right, here is the new silhouette adhesive mat. This is really great. I love that it's got the finer grids on it and that you can uh, load the um, mat from either the top or bottom. You can see here an older mat how um, you don't have that option and the grids are a bit bigger. It's well used, but this one is really great because you can see here at the top there is an arrow for you to insert it this way and I'm sure we've all done this with our other mats that we've turned it around and inserted it the other way. But this time it has the arrow there as well. This just really extends the life of your mat when you are um, kind of rotating it. All right, so I'm going to be placing this magnetic mat down on the adhesive carrier sheet. And then from there, I can lay down my card panel and use these magnets. And my dear sweet mom, she didn't even have a chance to use this. She's letting me be the first one to try it. So I'm breaking the magnets apart. And then I can lay my card panel down. Now, because the design I have, I wanted to do a originally wanted to do a border around it with some foil. I don't want to lay it right up to the top left hand corner of the mat. Um, and I don't want to use the magnets because I think they would get in the way. So I'm just going to use some regular um, thermal web purple tape just to hold my project down. You can use the magnets. Um, I haven't done it yet, so I can't really comment on um, how they work but hopefully you'll be able to see a future video from me uh, showing you that. So I just have this roll of foil that came with the uh, We Are Memory Keepers all-in-one set, which is really great. I'm just gonna trim off a piece. And ideally what you want to do is make sure that it is flat and smooth. 
So we're gonna actually use this magnet right now just to help smooth it down and hold it in place while I um, tape it down. So you wanna tape all the way around the edges. So I have my purple tape and smoothing it down as best as I can, just adding it to the edges. I really, really enjoy foiling with um, this set for the electronic die cutting machine. I also want to try the freestyle where it comes in as a pen as well and hopefully I'll have a, a video coming up with that as well. All right now that I have that all smoothed down I can go ahead and load it into my machine. This is the image that I'm going to be using today. It is this dandelion. Uh, you can get it from the design silhouette studio design store, sorry. Um, I had designed a couple different images, but I'm going to be using this one that's on my mat. I'll zoom in here to show you how I have the cross hatching here, which is going to be done through the uh, sketch portion of your silhouette design studio. Now it's different for Cricut, so if you're a Cricut owner, you'll have to um, go through what your setup is. There's different sketch styles. I'm using this one cross hatch, and you can see here if I move it to the right, it widens it out. I'm gonna have it far left because I want it as close together as possible to get a good foiling. I go ahead and do this for each of these separate images. So the image of the dandelion uh, you can purchase from Silhouette Studio. You can see that I've done it here as well. Um, you'll want to either release the compound path or make a compound path depending on what type of image it is and how they've the designer has originally set that up. And then I just uh, used my own text to make that make a wish portion. All right, so you can see here I have uh, the different images and each one you wanna make sure you go through and uh, set it here when you go to the send button, you wanna make sure that you're setting it for um, the proper sketch setting. So I'm just going through and making sure that each separate image is set to um, not cut, but to sketch. And in order to do that, I have to change some settings before I send it to the Silhouette machine. So I'm just going ahead and doing that. My computer is really slow, so it takes a little bit of time to go through each one. But here you can see that you want to select the sketch setting instead of the cut blade. And then you go ahead and make sure all your images are going to do that. I had to, I couldn't remember if I had set everything up, so I have to go through each individual portion here. Now, you can see I have that border around the edging. I don't end up putting that on. I set that to do a separate, um, separate foiling. So you can, on this machine, you can have two uh, carrier cartridges and I can choose which ones I want to cut or sketch first. So I decided to do the main image first, take a look at it, and if I liked it, um, I wasn't going to put the border around it. All right, so I'm just changing all the settings. Uh, I didn't change anything with the force or the speed, but I did have it do uh, two separate passes. And I, again, that is just to make sure that I got a good amount of foil down and that I wasn't, it wasn't skipping any areas or missing anything. All right, so when I am happy with all my settings, um, I do wanna show you actually here that you can choose um, different styles. So you can actually foil on leather. You can foil on uh, fabric, I believe, as well. So there's many different mediums you can use. I'm just going to be using the regular cardstock today. So um, play around with the settings and, and see what works best for you. I found that uh, the cardstock setting worked the best in this scenario. But I'll just quickly show you all the different mediums you can choose on the right here. Um, there's the foil sheets. Uh, yeah, there's just really a ton. Like, look at all of these. There's so many choices. And I think some settings are better than others. I, When I went through here, um, there is the foil sheet one, and um, there's nothing set up for it. So you can actually customize how that those settings work, and you can save it from there. All right, I'm gonna jump ahead here and send this off to the Silhouette machine, making sure that I head on over to the machine and ensure that the carrier sheets are level at 
um, horizontal level to the machine and that it slides in nicely. And then we'll jump ahead to once it's complete. It does take a while because I had it do the two passes, but it was well worth it. You can see here that I did not do the border. Um, again, I want to take a look at, see what it looks like and pull this back and absolute magic happens. Look at this. Stunning. There is no missed spots. It is just absolutely beautiful. I think that magnetic carrier sheet makes a world of a difference in foiling because the previous project I did, which I'll link to the video, um, it had a few missed places. And I'm not sure if that was just with my settings, but I just, I really find this mat makes a huge difference. Look at this just gorgeous. You could do this for wedding invitations. I'm going to do this on some more Christmas cards. I think that would be nice. Yeah, there's so much you can do. Oh, I'd love to try this with a watercolor background or even alcohol inks. So stay tuned for those. Here's a close-up look of today's card. Just stunning. The, the detail is amazing. And I decided to put it on, just trim down the panel and put it on a white card base. I think that really sets it off nicely. Now remember to head over to the Scrap and Stamp blog for your chance to enter the giveaway for this all-in-one foil quill set for your die cutting machine, your electronic die cutting machine. I thank you so much for watching today. Please, if you like today's video, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe so that you can see more videos in the future. Take care everyone and enjoy the rest of your week.